Mike Coetzee here. I'm business manager of Music Theater Works, and some of you may have joined me in the balcony of Khan Auditorium for my series of pre-show Balcony Talks. Normally, I'd be planning my June lecture right around now, but there's nothing normal about this June when I won't be getting anywhere near that balcony. So, no balcony, but we can still talk. Yes, the theaters are closed, but a good many of the world's theaters have opened their doors virtually through video streaming. There's a lot to choose from, and I thought I might guide you through some of this week's highlights. Now, the Metropolitan Opera has been in the video game for longer than most. The first Live from the Met broadcast aired on PBS more than 40 years ago, and the series is still going strong to this day. The Met now has an online streaming service, which has been offering a free opera every day from their catalog since mid-March. The streams remain up around 24 hours, so you have to act fast to catch them, but it's well worth it. Let me recommend a few of this week's highlights. If you're seeing this on Friday, May 8th, you still have a chance to see the very first Live from the Met telecast, Puccini's La Boheme from 1977, with the dream cast of Renata Scotto and Luciano Pavarotti. The camera work may be rudimentary by today's standards, but a chance to see these great singers in their prime in two of their signature roles is not to be missed. Now, the stream will go up around 6.30 p.m. Central on Friday and will remain there until about 5.30 on Saturday. During that time, you can start it whenever you like or even bounce around and just watch highlights. If you have a smart TV with Roku, Apple TV, or Amazon Fire, you can access the Met app and watch it there. If not, you can see it at the Met's website, metopera.org. And yes, there's an option to bring up English subtitles. Two more of this week's offerings have really caught my eye. On Monday the 11th, there's Massenet's great romantic tragedy, Werther, starring the phenomenal German tenor Jonas Kaufmann. This 2014 production, directed by Broadway and West End veteran Sir Richard Eyre, is riveting. The staging of the final act, in particular, is brutally effective. For fans of great singing and great theater, this is a must. I might be saving the best for last. On Wednesday the 13th, an historic 1988 performance of Richard Strauss's glorious comedy Ariadne of Naxos, starring Jesse Norman, Tatiana Troianos, and Kathleen Battle. If you don't know the piece, don't let the title, with its ancient Greek monikers and that big, fat German Auf in the middle, put you off. It's a backstage comedy about a harried young composer trying to present his latest masterpiece. And in classic Noises Off style, nothing goes smoothly. I mentioned Noises Off, but in many ways, Ariadne of Naxos is the grand opera equivalent of the drowsy chaperone, in which all the conventions of the genre are exposed and spoofed. But at the end of the day, the result is a marvelously effective and moving grand opera. It's a stunning piece of theatrical sleight of hand, and Strauss's score is truly magical. And that starry trio of leading ladies offer pretty much definitive performances of three of opera's most challenging roles. I'll be watching. Why don't you join me? Uh, virtually, of course. Okay, you're saying enough with the opera already? Okay, fine. Here's some dessert. But you'll have to act quickly to get your helping. Our old friend Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber has started a YouTube channel. It's called The Shows Must Go On, where every week he's been streaming one of his shows, which apparently must go on. The schedule needs a little explanation. The streams go up on Friday evening in England, so they start here around 1 p.m. Central Time. They then stay up for 48 hours, so you have till hmm, lunchtime on Sundays to see them. In past weeks, he's had Phantom and Superstar, among others, but this week's show is a real rarity. 1975's By Jeeves, 
a musical comedy treatment of P.G. Woodhouse's beloved Jeeves and Bertie stories. I've never actually seen it. It ran for a matter of minutes on Broadway, but I've enjoyed the cast album for years. It's a sweet, old-fashioned piece of work, far removed from the power ballad fireworks we normally associate with Andrew Lloyd Webber. Is it a masterpiece? Uh, probably not. Will it be a fun way to spend a couple of hours? I guarantee it. It'll be up starting Friday afternoon, then all day Saturday, and your last chance will be on Sunday morning. Why not plan an English breakfast matinee? I could go on. There continue to be impressive offerings from the National Theatre in London and Ontario Stratford Festival, to name but two. Maybe next week I'll spend a little more time on all the Shakespeare that's out there. Also, if you haven't seen the extraordinary 90th birthday tribute to Stephen Sondheim, it's still up on Broadway.com's YouTube channel. Just search the show's title, Take Me to the World. For the time being, much of the world is out of our reach. I hope these viewing suggestions will help bring a bit of the world we love into your home. I'm really going to miss seeing all of you in the balcony this June, but I'll do my best to keep in touch. So until next time, I'm Mike Coetzee for Music Theatre Works. Thanks for watching and take care of yourself.